here I have a room and it's a circle because circular rooms are just so interesting. And inside this room, we've got two randomly selected people. How likely is it that these two people share a birthday? Your response would probably be not very likely. If we just have two random people, not very likely that they share a birthday. That's certainly true. In fact, we could calculate exactly how likely it is, making a few assumptions. We'll just assume that there are 365 possible birthdays. We're not going to consider leap years. And we'll assume that all days are equally likely to be a randomly selected person's birthday. Let's say that this person's birthday is day day day, month, month, year, year, it's just some day, what's the likelihood that this guy has the same exact birthday? Well, of the 365 possible birthdays he could have, he'd have to have exactly this one. So the probability that he has the same birthday would be 1 over 365. Or, after consulting a calculator, this is about 0.3%. It is very unlikely. Now, of course, if there were three random people in this room, it would be a little bit more likely that at least two of them share a birthday, because there's just more people that could have a shared birthday. If we have four people in the room, it's a little bit more likely that at least two people share a birthday. Still, it's probably unlikely to happen, but it's certainly more likely than the first case with only two people. And that leads to a very famous paradox called the birthday paradox. The the birthday paradox is the surprising answer to this question. How many people do we need to consider in the problem that we were just discussing so that it is more likely than not that at least two people share a birthday? So again, the question is, how many people need to be in our room, or said in more general language, how many people do we need to consider, so that it's more likely than not, at least 50%, or we should say greater than 50% chance, that at least two of them share a birthday. Now, I'm going to put the answer to this question. You can take a minute to think about what you would suspect the answer is. It turns out the number of people you need so that it switches from less likely to more likely that at least two people in the room share a birthday? The answer is just 23 people. This is actually what's called a veridical paradox. It's a type of paradox that seems like it can't be true, but is in fact demonstrably true. So there is a perfectly valid mathematical solution and explanation that justifies the correctness of 23 to this question. The math necessary to show that 23 people actually makes it more likely than not that at least two of them share a birthday is pretty straightforward. But first, let's just do a quick reframing of the problem so that instead of the mathematical precision that we will look at, you can just slightly change your gut feeling because most people have the gut feeling that this seems very small because 365 days in the year, that's quite a lot of possible birthdays. It doesn't seem like having a mere 23 people would make it more likely than not that at least two of them have the exact same birthday. It just seems surprising, but it's a little less surprising with a simple reframe of the problem. And I guess really this isn't a reframe of the problem, it's just a reframe of your perspective. When we think about the people in this room, we could represent each of them with a dot. And why don't I just go ahead and draw all 23 dots just to really drive the point home here. 23. So here are 23 dots, I've just scattered them about, representing 23 people in a room. You have to realize that when we're asking about at least two of these people having the same birthday, we're not really asking about individual people, of which there's only 23. More so, we're considering pairs of people. For example, this pair of two people. Do they share a birthday? Maybe yes, maybe no. Or this pair of people. Do they share a birthday? Maybe yes, maybe no. You can start to see while there's only 23 people, there are a ton 
of different pairs of people that need to be considered here, and every pair of people could potentially have the same birthday. And so once you start to see the sheer number of comparisons that we have to make, even with only 23 people, it starts to become a little more intuitive that it would be more likely than not that for at least one pair of people here, the answer will be yes, they do in fact have the same birthday. In fact, while the number of people here is only 23, if I were to go forward and draw every possible connection, the total number of pairs is something that we uh, mathematicians call 23 choose 2. It turns out this is equal to 253. So there's only 23 people, but there are in fact 253 pairs of people, which starts to make this result just seem a little bit less surprising. The fact of the matter is that us humans just don't have a great gut instinct for these probability things. Our guts will often lead us astray. So let's actually see the computation that verifies 23 as the correct answer to this problem. Now, if we just have a bunch of people in a room, I've just sketched out some of them here without arms, let's consider the probability of them all having a different birthday. That's actually a little easier than considering all the possible ways that at least two of them could share a birthday. Just easier to think about none of them sharing a birthday, which is the opposite. So the first person has whatever birthday they have, whatever, we don't really care. But the second person, what's the probability that the second person has a different birthday from the first person? Well, of all 365 possible days, the second person could have 364 of them and we'd still be fine. He just can't have that same birthday that the first person has. So there's a 364 out of 365 chance that the second person does not share a birthday with the first. Now what's the probability that the third person doesn't share a birthday with the first two people? Well, each of the first two people have claimed a day, and so there's only 363 days remaining. So there's a 363 out of 365 chance, then, that this third person doesn't share a birthday with either of the first two people. And of course, this pattern continues. For the fourth person, there's a 362 out of 365 chance he doesn't share a birthday with the first three people. And for this last person that I've drawn, the uh, fifth person, there is a 361 out of 365 chance that he doesn't share a birthday with the first four people. And again, this pattern would continue up through all 23 people that we have. And for that 23rd person, there would be a 343 out of 365 probability that he does not share a birthday with any of the first 22 people, because he can't have any of the 22 birthdays they do, but the other 343 days are all perfectly fine. Now remember, the original question is about at least two of these people having the same birthday, but what we're calculating here is that none of them have the same birthday. So we're saying that this should actually be less likely than 50%. And perhaps once you actually see this computation, that's not as surprising as it could be initially, because all of these numbers are less than one. So as we multiply them together, the product is getting smaller and smaller. And in total, we have 23 factors, all smaller than one. They're all making our product smaller in the end. And so it's maybe not so shocking that in the end, after all of this multiplication, that the answer should be less than 0.5. In the end, once you run the numbers, this is actually about 0.49. So there's about a 49% chance that in a room full of 23 random people, that none of them share a birthday. Now that means, of course, that all of the rest of the probability, 1 minus 0.49, that's the chance, 0.51, that at least two people in the room do share a birthday. And of course, that's more likely than not. That's greater than the flip of a coin. So that's the computation that shows in a room of 23 people, it's actually less likely that none of them share a birthday than it is that at least two of them share a birthday, but only just barely. It's still not super likely that there's a pair of people sharing a birthday. 
I mean, it's more likely than not, but it's only just barely over 50%. Another question you might ask is, how many people do there need to be in the room so that the probability of at least two of them having a shared birthday is at least 99.9% .9 likely, so it's almost a sure thing that at least two people in the room share a birthday. How many people do you need for that? Turns out, if you run the numbers, it's about 75 people. So if you've got a room of 75 people, very, very likely, almost certain, that at least two of them share a birthday. And that too feels quite surprising. Now, what if we take it just one step further? What if we want a 100% chance that at least two people in the room share a birthday. How many people do you need for that? Well, going from just 23 people to 75 people basically took us from 51% to nearly 100%. To get that last little bit to 100%, you're actually going to need, it maybe isn't surprising, 366 people. That's of course because even if you have 365 people, it's definitely possible that all of them could have a different birthday. If we ignore leap years, there's only 365 days in the year, and so if we have 366 people, it's now impossible that they all have different birthdays. There's just not enough days to go around. At least two of them would have to share a birthday. That's actually a basic principle in mathematics called the pigeonhole principle. If we've got more pigeons than we have holes, then at least one of the holes has to have at least two pigeons. It's actually a really, really useful result. But that's a very famous veridical paradox. I think it's a great one to be familiar with, particularly if you like to talk to people about math, because even to someone who doesn't really know or like math, it can be explained pretty simply and is a pretty easy problem to be kind of curious about, especially once you hit somebody with that answer of 23 people. It's very surprising, and most people are going to want an explanation. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet.